I get asked this question a lot, and I've wondered it myself. So I did some book reading and internet searching and scientific paper reading to find out what exactly can a snake see? Today, we're talking about snake eyes. That snake eyes dice roll took me way longer than I expected. I felt like one of those trick shot YouTubers. Double threes. Snake eyes! I did it. Please don't leave this video to look up trickshot YouTubers. It took me a long time to research what exactly snakes can see. Welcome to the green room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Captain Farrell. He is just starting to go into shed, but he still has his really pretty green inchy eyes. So that's why I chose him. Say hello to my brother Kent behind the camera. You didn't even have to look anything up. You could have just asked me. Snakes can see directly into your soul. Every time you have one of those things out, they're always looking at me like, so you guys are brothers? And I'm all, yeah? Thanks for your input, Kent. Snakes perceive the world very differently than humans, mainly because we don't have the same tools of perception that snakes have. At least if we were talking about a bear, we could say, bears can smell really well. Imagine if you could smell really well. You can imagine that. Everything would probably stink, right? But if I said, imagine if you had a Jacobson's organ, we have no idea what that's like. We say that they smell with their tongues, that they pick up scent particles and bring it up into their brain, but it's not the same as smelling. They can actually also smell, which is completely different than the tongue flicking to the Jacobson's organ thing. We just don't have a frame of reference for that. The only frame of reference we have for their heat pits is like heat sensitive equipment, but sight is something we can relate to. Humans have eyes, snakes have eyes. So we're gonna try to figure out exactly what snakes can see. Will you turn your head just once towards the camera? Look at that. Look at those eyeballs. Almost, we're almost there. As it turns out, snakes have adapted their vision differently. So there's a wide range of visual abilities between snakes. Diurnal snakes that hunt during the day uh, typically have pretty good vision and many of them even have UV blocker vision which is kind of like wearing sunglasses, except it doesn't make things darker. It just sharpens their vision during the day. Snakes like this that are nocturnal or crepuscular don't have UV blockers. So it's more difficult for them to see things during the day. Arboreal snakes tend to have pretty good sight. And uh, the best sight probably belongs to the flying snakes or the gliding snakes. They need to be able to judge branches that they're gliding to at a distance. And they also have horizontal shaped pupils, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes. And that gives them almost binocular vision where they can zero in on a prey that's far away and, and jump on them, which is pretty cool. Let's dispel a couple myths as I run the mid-video Patreon credit scroll. Myth number one, snakes are blind. Obviously false. They have full-on eyes. They're not just there for decoration. Myth number two, you can judge whether a snake is venomous based on the shape of their pupils. That one is super false. Why would the shape of their pupils have anything to do with whether they have venom glands or not? The shape of their pupils has to do with when they hunt. Diurnal snakes generally have round pupils. Nocturnal snakes generally have horizontal slits. No, vertical. Horizontal slits are the ones we already talked about. But anyway, it has to do with their hunting, not venom glands. Myth number three is one that I just heard, and that is that snakes can see into your soul. That one is not true as far as I know, although I haven't looked it up. So anyway, thanks so much to the supporters over on Patreon. Really appreciate your help with the channel. Okay, let's talk about distance. I have Stella here for this, my super dwarf reticulated python. I think it's kind of hard to nail down what exactly they can see at a distance. Um, I would say that for pythons though that are nocturnal, they're not able to see very well during the day. So things that are right up close to them, I think they can see pretty well. Once you get any kind of distance though, they're, I think they're just seeing kind of blurry shapes is my guess. In the morning, when I open up tubs to, to let snakes out, if they wanna come out and roam around, if I open up the tub, walk away, and then make a big movement, they'll flinch because they don't realize that's me and it's just a shape making a, a fast movement. I will say though also that with the retics, with Stella here and Echo both, if they're on the tree, They'll spend almost the whole time watching me. doesn't matter where I go in the room. I can walk all the way across the room. They'll oftentimes keep their eyes on me. I shouldn't say they spend the whole time because they wander too, but they spend a lot of time 
trying to figure out what I'm doing. They're interested in that. And I don't think that that means they can see me well when I walk away, but I think they realize it's me still. Like I walk away, they track me, they know that that shape over there is me, so they continue to watch and then I come back and whatever. I tried to test this on my well-target trained snakes like Stella. If I get more than, I would say about two feet away, they'll lose the target. And then I have to bring it up closer to their face and then slowly pull it away and they'll follow it. But if I pull it away too quickly and it gets too far away, they, they lose the target. I think that's an indicator of what they can see at a distance versus close up. Okay, I did find some things on color perception that's interesting, which will help some of you who are planning to target train your snakes and need to pick out a target. Uh, but let's first see what's happening at Kent's Corner. Hi, and welcome to Kent's Corner, the only corner that green room pythons ever cuts to. Today, I'd like to dispel a few myths about snakes also. Myth number one, some snakes aren't deadly. False. Just ask a mouse. Myth number two, snakes do not team up to plot their keeper's death. False. Science has never proven that snakes don't team up in this manner. Best of luck to my brother in there. Myth number three, the movie Anaconda was all made up. False. In the final scene, John Voight dies, and I haven't seen John Voight in a movie since Anaconda. That was a documentary. Thank you for watching this Mythbusters episode of Kent's Corner. Spectacular information, Kent, as usual. Folks, I have Delilah here now because Stella decided to go up onto the tree. Humans are trichromatic. We see three main colors and all the shades in between. For those of you who grew up in the 80s, do you remember your one or two rich friends that had the big screen TV with the three colors that shot up onto the screen? Or maybe shot onto a mirror, I don't remember. The point is they had those red, blue, and green lights. Those are the three colors that we can see. Snakes are dual chromatic. That can't be right. Di oh, dichromatic, dichromatic. Snakes are dichromatic. They see two colors. So their big screen TVs in the 80s only had blue and green. Snakes can't see red. Now, that does not mean that snakes can't see the red light that the employee at the pet store told you to buy with your ball python because then they can't see that light. It does illuminate things. Um, it doesn't hurt their eyes. A lot of people say, oh, don't use a red light because it'll hurt their eyes. It won't hurt their eyes, but what it will do is hurt their sleep cycle, their day-night cycle, because it interrupts that. You just don't want to have light shining at night of any color. So um, just ditch that red light and get a CHE instead if you want heat to happen overnight. Hi folks, Future Bob here. So based on what we think we know about what ball pythons can see, I used my limited editing ability combined with my limited science knowledge and tried to compile a shot that approximates the way a snake might see the world. Uh, then I used my limited, but I would say talented, psychic ability to sort of try to figure out what was going through the snake's head. So let's take a look at Ron. Well, this is a perfect time for a midday look around. That seems about right. Oh, what do we have here? Some sort of ape or tentacled creature. And then, oh, my goodness, is that... Oh, what's it doing to that wombat? Oh, I'm not comfortable with this at all. I think I'm going to go find a place to hide before I'm next. You guys, I don't have a degree in editing, science, or psychic powers. I mean, I'm not bragging, but you saw the clip. For pythons, especially ball pythons, a lot of times you can't really see their pupils. Hers are a little bit tough to see because, you know, when a when a ball python, or probably any snake, but yeah, I would say probably any snake, but I'm guessing here. Uh, anyway, with ball pythons, when they have a stripe that goes through their eye, which many of them do, most of them do, that stripe also colors their spectacle, their, their eye cap. So a lot of times you don't see their pupils. But for snakes where you can see their pupil, you can often tell when they're sleeping because their pupil will be more of kind of a slit because they're not using their, their eyes really at that point. With the reticulated pythons, you definitely can. I can see their pupils very well. And when they're sleeping, like Stella is right now, can I get B-roll of this? See if I can do this without waking her up.
So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're sleeping. It, it also has to do with the amount of light in the room or the amount of light outside. If I bring them outside into, into the bright sun, they go to really small slits. Their, their pupils are constricting to protect the retinas, basically, is what's happening. So you can kind of you can kind of guess if they're asleep or not based on the size of their pupil, but it's not it's not always going to be accurate. But they definitely get bigger in a dark setting and they get a lot smaller in a super bright setting. And I said this in a video recently, when they think they're getting fed, their pupils get really big because their senses are all heightened and they want to be able to see and, and grab that little snack. I found nothing at all specifically about black-headed pythons. And I don't have Maya out right now, my black headed python, because she is in shed at the moment, which is a good time to talk about this for those of you who don't know. Uh, snakes don't have eyelids, they don't close their eyes. They have a scale over their eye called a spectacle or an eye cap that renews each shed. So they shed it off. Every time they shed, you can see that little eye cap and they have a new one right under it, but that's what protects their eyes. Anyway, Black-headed pythons are interesting to me. I'm going to take some guesses here because there's there was nothing written about them. But their black head extends over their eyes. Their eyes are jet black. You cannot see them in there. And so it's like they're wearing actual sunglasses all the time. And not the UV blocker sunglasses that, that make things sharper for snakes. But I mean actual human sunglasses where she, she's got to be seeing everything darker, right? Wouldn't you think? She's looking through that black eye cap. So... That can't be great when they're hunting at night. An interesting thing about black-headed pythons is they are diurnal during the cooler parts of the year and they're nocturnal during the warmer parts of the year. So I doubt that their eyes have adapted to either one specifically. You know, um, they're probably just kind of general eyesight, I would think. And they don't have visible heat pits, but they have one that's behind their rostral scale. And that makes me wonder if that heat pit maybe is extra sensitive, even though, how come you're wrapped up in my, oh, don't pull my, it makes me wonder if that one heat pit is extra sensitive to, to help at night when they're trying to look through their black eye cap. Uh, or maybe, you know, maybe their Jacobson's organ is extra sensitive and they're just going off of that. Who knows? It's also very possible that I don't have a degree in biology, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. Any of those possibilities are logical. Now, I know I'm going to get requests to do the next video on snake hearing. I don't know that it warrants a video, so I'm just going to say it right here. Snakes can hear. Not very well. It's kind of like if you plug your ears and then talk. You're hearing the sound through the vibration of your skull. And that's basically what happens with them. They pick up sounds through their jawbone and the rest of their bones, basically. Uh, and it gets picked up through an eardrum type mechanism in the back of their head. They can hear some airborne sounds, lower frequencies more so than higher frequencies. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. I'm gonna wear a red tracksuit from now on. It'll make me invisible to snakes. Oh, the snakes will see your tracksuit. It'll just look like you have bad taste in grayscale clothing. Dang it.